everyone. I'm very happy to be here to talk about our recent work, the implicit likelihood inference of realization parameters from the 220 millimeter power spectrum. I'm Xiaoxun Chao from Tsinghua University, and I collaborate with Yi Mao from Tsinghua and Benjamin D. Wandaud from IOP. And here is my content. First, let me give a very brief introduction about the background of this work. As we know, the first measurement of the 220 millimeter power spectrum from the EOR will be very likely achieved in the near future by HERA and SKA. So the development of tools to interpret the data is timely. Here we show an example of the 220 millimeter power spectrum at two receipts. The rear lines are the cosmological medical 220 centimeter power spectrum from the 220 centimeter fast simulation with the shaded orange, orange regions around it representing the total noise power spectrum, including the contributions from thermal noise and the sample variance errors, assuming the measurements with the HERA telescope. The back lens shows the thermal noise, which dominates over the sample variance errors, and the blue dots are the mock observation power spectrum with error bars representing the total noise. The 220 millimeter power spectrum is fully determined by the parameters in the realization models or realization parameters. For the forward problem, we could simulate the data with the simulator according to the parameters. However, to reveal the astrophysical process during realization, we need the inverse process which is to infer the realization parameters from future 220 meter power spectrum observation. This inverse problem can be performed with the Monte Carlo Markov chain or MC for short analysis. The question, however, is to how to choose the likelihood function. Actually, the predefined likelihood approximation may be biased thereby misestimating the posterior distributions. Recently, machine, machine learning has been extensively applied to 200 meter cosmology. However, note that such machine learning applications are mostly point estimate analysis and without posterior influence for, for recovered parameters. Then let me briefly introduce the methodology of our works. is the density estimation likelihood of flow inference with the power spectrum, or the 220 centimeter delphi, PS for short. Let's have a look at how it works. First, from the astrophysical parameters, we simulate the data with the simulators like the 220 centimeter fast simulation. At the same time, we could add varied signal contaminations into the simulation. And next, we compress the data into node dimension summaries, which is the power spectrum in this, in this work. Now we have the parameters and the data, and here is how the DLFA kicks in. Basically, the DLFA uses the neural density estimators for NDEs for short to learn from the data the conditional density from which the likelihood is, is implicitly evaluated at observations. And the likelihood combining with the parameter prior will enable us to get the parameter posterior, which could be sampled with MZMC. In this way, we do, we do not rely on an explicit likelihood function and only evaluate the likelihood from the trained neural density estimators. For the details of the Delphi and the neural density estimators, please refer to our previous papers, so at World 2022. So let me present some results. For proof of concept, we intend to infer two astrophysical parameters, the aerodizing efficiency and the minimum barrier temperature of two of the halos that host aerodizing sources. We first focus on two specific models that both match the latest constraints in the electron scattering optical depths. The global realization histories are similar, but realization 
and fan guides models is powered by more abundant low-mass galaxies, yet with smaller analyzing efficiency than the bright galaxy model. So the H2 bubbles in the former are smaller and more fractal than in the latter. We compare our results in blue with that from 21 MMC, where we also use the parts of the as the statistics. Both our method and the 21 MMC can recover posterior distributions for the realization parameters in the sense that meetings are within the estimated one sigma confidence region. However, our method outperforms 27 MMC in terms of the location and size of credible parameter regions. Quantitatively, the one sigma errors in the former are two to three times smaller than in the latter. Note that in 27 MMC, the likelihood function is assumed to be a multivariate Gaussian with independent measurements at its received and its k mode. Our results question the validity of this explicit likelihood assumption. Now we apply the realistic effects, including the total loss power spectrum with thermal loss and sample variance to errors, as well as using foreground card to avoid, for, to avoid the foreground. We first choose the results of posterior inference from MOOC observations with, with HERA. Comparing our methods with Intrans and MC, their recovered meetings are in large in, um, the, the, the recovered meetings are in large agreement. But the one sigma credible regions estimated by our method are generally slightly smaller than those by Tontrans and MC. Next slide shows the results of posterior influence for more observations with SKA. We see the one sigma errors are slightly smaller than here in the previous slide. And these errors estimated by our measures are in general slightly smaller than those by Tontrans MMC. Until now, we have seen that the neural networks can get very less results. Then we may ask the question, how reliable are these posteriors? So we perform the validation of posteriors, which tests statistically the accuracies of the inferred posterior distributions. We employ 300 samples for mock observations with only cosmological 20 cm power spectrum and with realistic effects with HERA and with SKA, respectively. We first focus on the validation of posteriors for each single parameter marginalized over other parameters. We adopt the metric of the probability integral transform, or PIT for short, which is basically the cumulative distribution function, or CDF, of the inferred marginal distribution and the two values. With the PIT values, we perform the probability calibration by the so-called quantum quantum plot, where we compare the quantiles of the PIT values so in the y-axis with quantiles from the ideal uniform distribution in the x-axis. This quantum quantum plot falls on the diagonal line if the PIT distribution is exactly uniform. And we find that the curves for more cases of mock observations are close to the diagonal line. Note that the uniformity of the PIT distribution is only a necessary condition, condition for real marginal posteriors. So as a complementary test, we will also perform other calibrations in our works. Because the parameters are degenerate, so the validation of the marginal posterior can be biased. Then we adopt the non trivial extension of the marginal posterior validation to joint posterior validations. And one of the statistics we adopt is the highest probability density, which describe the possibility of the two parameters under the inferred distribution. And it is worth uniformly distributed if the parameters are accurate. The related calibration is the called is the so-called probabilistic HPD calibration. We will also make the Q2 plot, quantum quantum plots. 
Other methods we adopt are the probabilistic Copsner calibration and the Kendall calibration. To provide a quantitative measure of the similarities between the distribution of these statistics and the uniform distribution, we adopt two metrics, the KS test and the CFM test. For both tests, the now, the now hypo hypothesis is that the, these statistics from the inferred posteriors are uniformly distributed. And we adopt a significance level of 0.01. We find that the p values for work statistics are well larger than 0.01, meaning that we accept the null hypothesis that these statistics are uniformly distributed, which, recall, which we wrote that, or we know, or we, um, recall that it is the accessory condition of the actual, actual posteriors. Note also that. It is hard to fully explore the validity of the posteriors from the implicit likelihood inference. While as the first step, we show some diagnostic tools that might be helpful. So finally, we show the summaries. We perform a base inference of the realization parameters where the likelihood is implicitly defined through forward simulations which is called 20 centimeter Delphi PS for short. Our method outperforms the standard MMC analysis using the 21 MMC in terms of the location and the size of credible parameter regions in all cases of local observations. We also note that the validation of both marginal and joint posteriors with sophisticated statistical tests. <laughs>